This is one of the first players in the 3D printed construction space, and I bet you may have never heard of them before. Their name is AMT. They developed this gantry style printer in Russia in 2015. Since then, they've been working on some pretty cool stuff, including this one of a kind project we'll touch on later in the video. This video is sponsored by Ventures Equipment, SureMix Mixer Pump Solution for 3D printed concrete, but we'll get to that later too. Having been in the industry for so long at this point, since 2015, AMT has really been fine-tuning the engineering of their system and now they've gotten it down to where the lines are the quality you see in front of you. They also start at a very affordable price, around $160,000 for a unit that may be around 12 by 16 feet. One of the primary reasons you may not have heard of them is that their team is primarily Russian. They are active on social media but they post all of their content in Russian so it's been difficult for American audiences or English speakers to follow along the progress they've been making with this technology. This gantry style printer has a hopper at the extruder head so we can assume there's probably some kind of mixer within that hopper agitating the material before it's deposited on top of the previous layer. On their website, AMT says their system can be operated with just two people. In a minute from this drone footage, we'll be able to see inside the wall. Between the inner and outer layer, they do have some reinforcement. This helps hold everything together straight, especially before the material cures, and also adds a bit of strength in tension. Concrete is extremely strong in compression, but in tension, it only has about one-tenth its compressive strength. So by adding other materials horizontally and potentially vertically, you can increase the tensile strength of concrete. The wavy patterns demonstrate how capable 3D printed robotics are at following parametric designs and computer models, despite how difficult this would be for human laborers. This example is maybe the biggest gap I've seen between the inner and outer walls. I would imagine this is because winters in Russia get pretty cold so they need a lot of insulation to achieve an R value that will prevent the family inside from freezing. Also notice the difference in coloration of this concrete. This demonstrates that it was probably printed at different times. They print a certain height and then stop to allow the material to harden. That way they can resume printing and have confidence in the structural integrity of the layers below. Depending on your material requirements, the height you're able to build per day can vary. And depending on how you choose to have these layers connected, the strength of the joint can vary too. If you have a cold joint, regular concrete curing on top of already cured concrete, that's not a very strong connection. Ideally, you have a wet layer deposited directly on top of another wet layer so that you get a monolithic structure equally strong as if it had been poured into formwork. Man, I would love for them to send me one of these. The videos I'd be able to make if I had access to a printer, I'd be able to get designs from the audience to print, run all kinds of awesome events and competitions. I really feel like a company that sent me a printer would get way more than their money's worth for just the ad value. Maybe that's something we can work towards in the future as the channel grows. If you guys would like to see something like that happen, let me know in the comments. From this footage AMT sent, it looks like they have a pretty effective hose management system. It's kind of small for the size of the gantry system. I wonder if they ever have issues with clogging. Hopefully I'll be able to do a podcast interview with one of their founders where we can ask some more detailed questions about the maintenance and upkeep of their system. One thing is for certain, that's 3D printing allows all kinds of new design possibilities. Whether or not you like them is up to you, but the majority of the possibilities have yet to even be explored. It's going to take all kinds of clever designers to come up with models that can be printed and then it'll be up to the people to determine which we find appealing and aesthetic and which we don't really find much value in. 
The layer, shape, size, and quality kind of remind me of the Icon House in Austin that I was in recently. It's incredible how many of these companies pursuing construction automation are coming out of Russia. I guess there's something to be said for the quality of their engineering. Before it was the space race, and now it's the construction automation race, as these companies compete to figure out who can find the most efficient way to remove people from the job site. If you look really closely here at the fourth and fifth layers from the top on the right side, there's a little crack. It's interesting because this crack is isolated to those two layers and doesn't expand to the other layers around it like we've seen in many other 3D printed houses where all of the cracks run completely vertical from top to bottom. This could be a material advantage. Like the other companies 3D printing concrete houses, they put something over the areas like windows and doors where they need to span uh, a distance because they can't print in midair, of course, with concrete. AMT also sent me over some of their documentation for how they do material testing to ensure it has all of the parameters needed. There are many qualifications that the material must go through in order to confirm it can be printed, which includes pumpability, a lack of too much slump, and also a fast setting time so that the next layer can be deposited on top. If you have too much slump, then the end position of the material isn't where it was calculated to be in the computer system, and you may end up with a differential in the height of the printer and the height of the last layer. You can easily fix this by adjusting the z-axis height, but doing this manually is less of a perfect solution than a computer going up a perfectly adjusted amount per layer. So if you have too much slump, it can result in having layers that are a little bit uneven with a smaller one here and then a larger one later as the slump increased or as people manually adjusted settings. Having a mixer inside the hopper at the extruder head helps to reduce the amount of air that gets stuck in the concrete. Often when concrete's poured, it's vibrated to remove any air bubbles that could sacrifice the structural integrity of the monolithic system. When you're printing concrete, you also need to make sure you don't end up with bubbles that are too large. Having large bubbles will make your concrete weak. I always refer to this material as concrete because it's gray and that's something easy for people to understand. But technically, because all the aggregate is under 2 millimeters, it's a mortar, not a concrete. Printing concrete with large aggregate is difficult because it tends to get stuck in the hose with the fast setting additives. This makes you stop and clean the printer, so having a mortar that's less likely to clog is tremendously advantageous for 3D printing. Now a word from our sponsor, Ventures Equipment. Tony Johnson with Ventures Equipment. This is uh, our Sure Mix three phase piece of equipment, 220. A sensor, when this hopper is filled up, it will completely shut the machine off because it's over full. You know, we do a lot of uh, one on one talks with different people. You know, if you call Ventures Equipment, you will talk to myself or one of the other gentlemen in the office. So we're very hands on people. You have questions, if we don't know, we'll find out for you. We try to do the best we can to help you know all our clients uh, to to better suit their job. If it's not with our equipment, you know we will try to lead you in a direction to help you get what's best for your uh, your concrete needs. You can check out their Shermix system at their website in the link below, or get in touch with them there too. Tony's a great guy, and he's looking forward to talking to you. Without further ado, here's the crazy one of a kind project promised to you in the beginning of this video. It's a cat house. They actually built a cat holding a Rubik's Cube attached to a small glass structure. The kitchen is inside the cat's head. They 3D printed the shape of the cat and then painted over the details. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share it with somebody else who might appreciate AMT. You can check them out in the description as well. Maybe you want to order one of their printers. Maybe they'll want to send me one to make videos with. My pipe dreams aside, there'll be some awesome content coming to this channel very soon from the many 
3D printed houses in America that are nearing completion, along with some other new companies, new technologies, new strategies, and all kinds of great things we'll be discussing on this channel. So stay tuned and I'll catch you next time.